This program demonstrates configuring digital I.O. ports as well as the use of the change notification interrupt. So here at the beginning of the program, you see we define four unsigned integers, old B, old F, new B, and new F. And those are going to be used to hold the input values of ports B and port F. So let's scroll down to the bottom of the program and take a look first here at setting up the change notification interrupt. So the first thing we do is we disable interrupts. That's step two in our seven step interrupt setting up routine. Uh, in the next step, uh, we are enabling or we're turning on the change notification interrupt here by changing this bit on of change notification control or CNCON special function register. And we're also going to tell change notification to pay, pay attention to change notification pin 2, 17, and 18. And uh, those pins correspond to uh, pins B0 and B1 and F4 on the, on the ports B and F. Okay? So that means if there's any change on any of those three pins, then we're going to generate an interrupt. The next thing is we set the priority and sub-priority of the interrupt. And here we've got priority level three. In the next step, we set the interrupt flag to zero, so we clear it, so no interrupt has been requested. And now we enable change notification to generate interrupts. And in the last step, we enable the CPU to start paying attention to interrupts. And after that, we just go into an infinite loop, just waiting for interrupts. So let's go ahead and take a look at the top of the program where we define the interrupt service routine right here. And you can see that we're using interrupt vector 26. And you find that by consulting the table in your data sheet. And we're using priority level three, agreeing with the definitions that we made earlier. And also, we're using software context save and restore. And we're naming our interrupt service routine CNISR. Now, the first thing we do in the interrupt service routine is read from port B and port F. Now, the reason for that is port, pins on port B and port F uh, are in the change notification scan. And to properly clear the interrupt for change notification, we have to read all of the pins that are involved in change notification. Okay. So now we've got the new values on port B and part port F. And now we can compare them with the old values, old B and old F. And that's the only way we can tell which of those pins generated the interrupt. All we know when we jump to this routine is that one of those pins have changed. And now by comparing new B and new F to old B and old F, we can figure out which of those pins actually generated the interrupt. And then we can take appropriate action. And that's commented out here. The next thing we do is we set old B and old F to the values that we just read in from port B and port F. So the next time we enter this interrupt service routine, we're comparing to the right old values of those two input ports. Then down here, we're going to toggle bits 4 to 7 of port B. Uh, the reason we do that is to change the values of four of the outputs. We're going to toggle uh, an LED on the NU32 board. Then finally, we clear the interrupt flag and exit the interrupt service routine. So finally, let's go to the setup of the digital input and output pins. So the first thing that we see here is this AD1 pin configuration is set to 00FF. So what that means is, uh, remember, this applies to port B only, because only port B can have analog inputs. So this means that pins 8 to 15 are analog inputs. And 0 to 7 are digital I.O. Remember, a zero here means analog, a one means digital. Now, in this next command here, tris b, uh, you can ignore the first uh, or the top level eight bits because those correspond to the analog inputs. And uh, we can't choose them to be digital inputs or outputs. And that's the point of this tri-state special function register is to choose which digital pins or inputs or outputs. 
So according to this, we can see that uh, pins four to seven are configured as outputs and pins zero to three are configured as inputs. So we've got B four to seven are digital outs and pins B zero to three are digital ins. This next command here, uh, we're setting some of the uh, inputs, or sorry, outputs to be open drain. Uh, so in particular, this, this hex value here, we can write in binary as 0B11000, and what this is saying is that since bits six and seven have a one in it, they are uh, configured as open drain. So B six to seven are open drain digital outputs. Now these next three lines are setting up uh, internal pull up resistors for three of our pins. So this stands for change notification pull up enable. And so we're setting CN, oops, CN2, 3, and 17 to have internal pull ups. And if we consult the pinout for our pick, we can see that this corresponds to pins B0, B1, and F. Now, it's not necessary that the pins be involved in the change notification for us to use the pull-up resistors, the internal pull-up resistors. Uh, it's just those 22 change notification pins have them available, whether or not we use those particular pins in the change notification. Then down here, we uh, read the current values at port B and port F into old B and old F, so we can use that in the interrupt service routine comparison. And finally, the last thing we do here is we set some of the digital outputs. So if we write this in binary, that 50 becomes 0B01010000. Now, these pins B0 to 3 are digital inputs, so it doesn't matter what we write there. It only matters for the digital outputs here, the values that we write. And this means that B7 is pulled low or to an output value of 0 volts. Pin 1 here now, or sorry, B, B6 is left floating. So you see here, this was, a, this was an open drain output. And by sending a 1 to it, we leave it floating. But probably we have an external pull-up resistor, so it's going to pull up that voltage to high. So float to high. Pin B5 here is not an open drain output. It's a typical buffered output, so we send zero volts to that buffered output. Output, And finally, pin B4, again, is a typical buffered output. We send a one. It's going to have, then, 3.3 .3 volts at the output. 